Well, good morning. My name is Dustin. Uh, I get to open up the word a little bit today. And um, I want to I start with asking a question. If you, you got your keys with you? Did everyone rem- remember their keys? Okay. For a second, I want, I want you to think about your keys. Okay? If you were to get out your keys, do you have a lot of keys or a little keys? A little? little? Those of you who are lucky have little keys. Those of you, I have, I have like the weight, the weight keys. I hate having keys in my pocket. Like, like anybody have the, the, the reindeer bells that they put on their side? And, you know, it sounds like reindeer. You know, I don't like that either. And I'm, I'm, I thought, how do, you, how do you organize keys? I, I wish there was those little, those little things. I'm a minimalist. I like little things. So I, normally I do not even come into church wearing these. When I, when I go somewhere, I have a, I have a carabiner system. Okay, so here's the carabiner, and, uh, and what's nice is, is, okay, I'm going into church, so I'm going to take my church key and a little fob and whatever I'm driving that day. Today's the Jeep, because it's rainy, and that's my rainy car. So there's that, and then I put that in my pocket, and the rest of it, I just normally leave in the car. So now you know, if you wanted to steal another car of mine, you break into my one car and then you got the keys to the rest of my cars. But that's what I do. That's what I normally do. If I'm going in the store, same thing, whatever car I'm in. So over the Christmas break, over the, over the holiday, um, we, were, we, were, we got some checks from my mother and or my dad, and they gave us some checks, our whole family some checks. And, and so we decided to go to the bank to cash some checks. And we decided to go up to Hillsburg because we wanted to go to the dollar store that Heather likes, the Hillsburg dollar store. It's the best one, I guess. So, so we go there. And so we get out of the car, I get my keys, you know, I get my keys, and then I, I, oh, oh, we're going into the bank, so boom, I get my my car key, and put the rest in there, lock the door, go in, we cash the checks, and we come out, and immediately I put my hand in my pocket, and I think, oh no, I've made a big mistake. I've got a bad feeling about this. Something's going on, okay? And and I realized that I'd, I'd put the wrong keys in the car. And I totally um, put the wrong keys in the car, and I was, I was like, what do I do? I've locked myself out of the car, and, I, and Heather had left her keys at home. And we're like, okay, what do we do? Now, what do you know? There was a tow truck guy right there, and he was Slim Jim in somebody else's car right at that exact moment. I, Praise God, this is great. And then, then, and so we talked to him, hey, can you help us? He goes, yeah, just a second. And he comes out, and he goes, yeah, it'll be such and such amount of money. And we're like, that's more than our Christmas checks were. We can't afford that, you know? And we're like, what are we going to do? And, 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 and so I got on my phone, and I started making some calls. And I called. Um, George was up here. He was sitting up there. George is our, our high school uh, leader. I called George. I said, George, you, you got to save us, man. Can you, can you help us out? Can you, can you bring us our key? Can you go get our keys out of our car or, or out of our house and come? He goes, don't worry, man. I got you. And so he went, and he, he went to our house. I mean, I'm so thankful I have a friend like George, because he, he's a guy that will, it, you know, it was nighttime, it was cold, it was rainy, and he decides to come. He goes to our house. He breaks into our house without damaging anything, right? And then he faced down our crazy cat, because he's like, dude, I walked in there, and that cat's like, what? Who are you? And he goes, it was like she was ready to rip me apart, and she probably would have. You know, she's like one of those tiger leopard cats. I don't know. And, and, he, and then he, he found my wife's keys. Then he drove all the way up to Hillsburg from South Santa Rosa, all the way up to Hillsburg, all right, you know, to give us the keys to save this. Man, I was so thankful we had somebody that we could call. Isn't it nice to have someone you could call, especially when you get into trouble? I mean, it, it's always a necessity. Well, we, we're going through this series called Finding Our Footing. And um, we've been talking about the whole idea of it's important. And th- this world is dangerous. This world, there's a lot of things where we can fall, where we can slip and fall, where we can get into trouble. And if we don't, it, we've been talking about spiritual practices of how can we get through these times and, and, and make sure that we have a sure footing to land on, to walk on. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says this, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for many who choose to, to that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only few ever find it. 
See, we've been talking about these practices, and it's important to have these practices. And the hope is to live out our life so we can have sure footing, so we don't fall. So we don't fall down on the path of destruction, or as the NLT so eloquently describes it, the highway to hell, right? We don't want to do that. We want to live a life that's secure. And so last week, Gene talked about the practice of believing. And the idea is we need to believe the truth that God has spoken to us and not the lies that the rest of the world brings. And, and when we do that, she, I loved how she explained it because the English doesn't really do it justice and, and the Greek does a little bit better. Hebrews does the best, but, but she talks about there's, there's many aspects of the word belief. And a lot of times if you say, hey, I believe you, a lot of times we're thinking, I, with my head, agree with you. The logic is right, it's working out, uh, there's a mental assent, and we agree. But then Jean t- talked about also, she says that it also has to do with your heart. You also believe with your heart, and you, there's those times when you just know, and you can't explain it, but there's that time when you know that, that is true, Some, or, 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 or you know when something's not going right, or whatever that is. But there's also, there's, so there's, there's believing with your head, there's believing with your heart, but there's also the concept of believing with your hands or your feet. And sometimes if you believe in something, that means you're actually going to go do it, Right? You don't just stand there and talk about it, but you believe it with your body, with your actions, and living out your belief. And you can't, the only way to have real faith in God is to have all three. To believe, to have faith with your head, with your heart, and with your hands or your feet. Well, today I get to talk about the practice of belonging. And the idea of, of we want to live a life out when we don't, when we fail, when we mess up, we we live this life, we need to have people around us to belong. And this world is so full of change. You think about this society, is so full of change. Years ago, there would be a lot of people in this room who've probably grown up here in Santa Rosa all their lives, born and raised, and live here in Santa Rosa. But chances are, most of us haven't. Most of us have lived in different places, and, and Santa Rosa is a great town. We love living here, but it's, it's not our hometown where we grew up. Not, it's not where we were born. And then there's the, the, now it's a rarity of people who have lived, you know, people who have worked at the same job for 30, 40 years. And a lot of times, years and years ago, there would be people who had done that, but now, nowadays, that, that's not common. Most people, they talk about... Um, I don't know, they change jobs on a regular basis sometimes. Sometimes we have to because this world is so full of change. And with all the change that is going on in our lives, think about this, jobs change, cities change, relationships, friendships, homes change, uh, where you live, your churches change. Everything seems to change and it's difficult to find a place for people to belong, that people find and they call home. It's no wonder that this world is so full of people who are lonely. I, I find it crazy, crazy that um, we have the technology today that we can video chat to someone across the world in an instant. In fact, not only video chat, but multi-video chat. You could talk to multi-people at the same time with a little thing in your pocket called a phone. And yet, we have a hard time walking across the room and having a face-to-face conversation. It's because we, we have a hard time fe- belonging. We have a hard time feeling like we can belong with people. And sadly, when we have a hard time connecting with people, a lot of times we default to retreating and isolating ourselves, and we put a little bubble around us so we feel safe. Have you ever done that? And we all have the different bubbles we have. They're all different. Some bubbles are bottles. And we drink it to feel safe. Some bubbles are screens. And we look at that screen and now we're okay. I don't need friends, I got my screen. And we have these bubbles that we isolate ourselves. And the problem with isolating ourselves is that's exactly when the enemy attacks. Take a look at 1 Peter 5, 7, and 8, or 8 and 9. It says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion for so- looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. 
You know what I love about this verse? Is, he, is Peter ties in the, the, the idea of the enemy attacks, but don't forget you're a part of a community. You know why? Because the enemy, when the enemy attacks, that's, uh, think about this, a roaring lion, what does he like to attack? The weak. The weak. The stragglers. The ones that are left behind, the ones that are isolated. And that's exactly what the enemy does. And he says, you need to remember, you need to be a part of community. Otherwise, the enemy's going to really attack, and he's going to get you. See, those of us who are not connected to a tribe often find ourselves in trouble. When we don't have someone around us to call because we lost our keys and made a stupid mistake, we find ourselves in trouble. When you're alone, that's when your mind starts to drift onto things that you shouldn't be thinking about, right? Right? You know those times of the di- and when you start thinking about those thoughts you shouldn't be thinking about? When you're alone, that's when you look around and go, well, no one else is looking, so I can do, I can do it now. That's when we find ourselves open to the enemy's attack. And that's why we need one another. Think about this. Batman, as cool as Batman is, he needed Robin. The Lone Ranger, I mean, it's in his name, Right? The Lone Ranger. Who did he need? He needed Tonto. You know? Snoopy needs Charlie Brown. Even Superman. Think about this. Even Superman needs the Justice League. And he's Superman. He's the most powerful man in the universe. In some universes, right? God wants, I mean, everyone needs a friend. But not only that, you need a friend. But also, there is someone in this world that needs you. You see the difference there? You need need something. You need need community, but community needs you. It's my hope that here at church, here at SRCC, everyone can be known and needed. It's like, my, my hope is that, that, that when you walk in the door, when you come here, not only are you just like, oh, hi, how are you? Which is nice. It's nice to get a smile. But someone knows you. Is that we know one another, that we, we get to know one another. And that takes a lot of work the larger we get. Because we have to choose. Okay, we need to be known. We need to know each other. I know you, even though you have this thing that you're struggling with. See, most of the time we like to be known, but not really known. But God wants us to be really known. So we know each other, warts and all, failures and all, mistakes and all, and we still love one another. But not only that, we're also called to be needed. See, when we walk through these doors, I, my hope is that you don't just come here and enjoy the show, right? Just come here and consume. Come here and just take, 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 take. But you know what? You are needed to to, to contribute, to do things as well. Not just, uh, I, mean, I mean, my hope is that you can come and lead. I need help of people leading. I need others to help lead me closer to Christ because when I do it by myself, I fail. I go downhill. We need other people to lead other people, to be there, to contribute, to be a part of things because everyone is needed. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, all of you together are Christ's body. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. It's my hope that there's a place for you here in God's family, where you're known by name, but also you're needed, where you're missed if you're gone, not out of guilt, but because, hey, we love having you around. And when you, when you, when, when, when someone chooses to like skip or whatever, it's like they're missed. That's a good thing. A place where you belong. I mean, we all kind of want that, right? Where everybody knows your name, you know that song, right? We want a place to belong. We want a place where we're needed. But it can only happen if we choose to actually act out on that faith. We all believe it with our heads. We all really secretly want it with our hearts, but, but are we willing to do it with our hands and our feet? So I want to talk about two practical applications, okay, that we can help foster belonging within our church. 
first thing is we need to choose to connect with each other. We need to actually choose to connect with others because when we choose to connect with others, that's when, like, God works in our lives. God is happy when we do that. See, there's a, there's a myth that all I need is me and God. There's, a lot of people believe this. I don't need to go to church. I, do, I got me and God, and that's all I need. And what's interesting is when they say that, they are totally misunderstanding who God was from the very, very beginning. There's a story in Genesis about God creating this world. And he created a man called Adam. And when he created Adam, he, he walked with Adam all the time. I mean, there was, there was no sin. So, it, I mean, Adam was naked. And there was no sin. He didn't know. But also, there was no division between us and God like there, there, that sin brings. I mean, Adam and God walked together in the Garden of Eden, and it was great. But what's interesting is take a look at this verse in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Now, isn't this interesting? Because isn't it enough for Adam to have God? Well, according to God, no. It's, in fact, it's not good. In fact, God is saying, look, I created you, and yes, I want a relationship with you, but also I created you because you need a relationship with others too. It's a connection, a, a belonging. You need belonging. God created us because he knew that every single one of us were better together. And that's why it's important to invest in a consistent relationship with others, other believers. And I say consistent because a lot of times we are not. But consistency brings intimacy. The more consistent we are with people, we are able to get to know one another and trust one another. It, 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 a lot of times it's trust over time. And we have to get one, we have to choose to do that. We have to choose to connect if we want to be able to handle it. And God knows this is important because without a tribe, we all get into trouble. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says this, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back with and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. You see, none of us came into this world alone. Think about that. You didn't come here on this world alone. Someone else was there, Right? The saddest thing in this world is when someone leaves this world alone. So why would you think that you can live life alone? You can't. Now, I've learned this lesson of, of, of connecting in a unique way. See, I, I, you know, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor's kid. And, and I've read all the books about community, about belonging, about the importance of relationship and community. But there was this time, um, you know, I've read the books, and I believed it with my head. My heart really wasn't there. It's like, oh, yeah, we got to do this. And, and so there came a point where um, Heather and I, we were living in Arizona. This was 20-some years ago now. And we were like, okay, God, um, we're going we're gonna, to, I believe with my head. I don't really feel it with my heart. But sometimes when you don't feel it with your heart, and God is telling you to do something, you have to actually lead with your feet. Does that make sense? There are times when you don't feel like doing the right thing or doing what God calls you to do, and God calls you to do it anyway, and that means you have to do it whether you feel like it or not. And so we semi-reluctantly decided to get involved in a small group. And it takes time to get to know community because we were living in Arizona, and all of our family was out of state. And so we didn't really have a community. We had to get to know the people, and it takes time. And, and, and you know those times when you go to a small group, and sometimes it's just like, whoa, these are weird people. I don't want to come back. It happens, okay? I'm a pastor, and it happens. It's probably most of the time my group, and people are like, no, no, we don't want that, right? But it happens. And I, I like to think about uh, tr trying out small groups. And, and just so you know, there's, there's a, in the program, there's a, there's a life group. There's a life group brochure of the, the new group, groups. But I want to encourage you to use the, the pink spoon approach. And what I mean by the pink spoon, you know when you go to 31 Flavors, 
And there's all these flavors. And if I were to ask you right now, choose one of those. You get a triple scoop. Choose it now. You'd go, no, 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 no. Well, let me try it. Where are those pink spoons at? Right? And you'd get out a pink spoon, and you'd go, can I try rum raisin? And you go, like I would go, no, no, I'm not getting that. Okay, let's go over more over here. Mint chocolate chip. We're getting warmer, but much warmer. And then I would settle on Rocky Road, because that's the best ice cream flavor in the world, right? Rocky Road. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so a lot of times with small groups, that's how it is. You need to try it. And if it doesn't fit, try another one. And if that doesn't fit, try another one. But eventually, you need to buy a cone. You need to get a cone. You need to just dig in there. And, and God wants us to do the same. He wants us to just dig in there and just really reach out. And so after a few months of consistently digging in there, we found ourselves connecting with some others in the church. And these people within our church became friends. And, 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 and we loved hanging out with them. And, and, and it was great because we weren't from the area and um, we decided to buy a house and it was a fixer-upper because we didn't have any money. So we bought a house for $103,000. That was awesome. It didn't have any floors in it. <laughs> and if you know who I, if you knew me then, um, you would know that I was really good at Star Wars trivia. That's what I was really good at. I was not good at fixing a house. Not good at fixing a house. I wasn't a handyman guy. I, 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 had, I had no clue what we were doing. And we bought this house, and it was like we had to kind of redo electrical. We had to do lights. At the very first night, we turned on the plumbing, and it was in Arizona. And so the plumbing, all the, two, the, the washers and everything had gotten so brittle and dry. We turned on the plumbing so we could, like, flush the toilets first night. And we slept on the floor in, in, um, on an airbed. Um, and then we woke up and there was a puddle of water in front of the, in the kitchen floor because all of the washers had, had, were brittle and it was leaking all over. And so guess what I had to learn the, very, the second day that we lived in our house? How do you install a kitchen sink? And I'm like, I don't know. What kind of tools do you need? I, all those things, all of those questions. And what was amazing is our community, our small group, showed us how to do it. And they say, here, here, let me show you. And we started putting in flooring, and, and this is how you do it here. You can borrow my saw. And then, and then, you know, and then the water heater goes out, and they're like, you need a hacksaw. And so my buddy, he goes over to his truck, and he comes out with it. He gets, goes to get, and he's a big guy, real big, burly guy. He comes out, and have you seen those little tiny hacksaws that are like this big? He comes out with this little tiny thing. He goes, this will be for you, you know. And he hands me this hacksaw, you know. And, and they helped us put together this house. I mean, I, I, we, had, we had friends, our community was like, like electrical, you know, and, I, and I'm good at electric. I hate doing plumbing now, you know, but it's like all these things, we started putting together this broken down house and making it our home, all because of our community, all because of our small group. And then Heather got pregnant. And those of you who have had children, you remember your very first child? Remember that first pregnancy? That was, kind of, it was scary. It's a scary time because you just don't know what to do. And, and there, I, I mean, I had no idea. I re we read all the books and all those things, but, if, but go, living through it, and then there's emotions that come with it, right? And there was this one time where, where Heather just like, I don't know what happened. I'm like, who am I married to? This person is crazy. And, and, and literally, I, I, was, I was freaking out. And she was freaking out too. And then, then one of our small group, she comes down, sits down, she goes, Heather, that's what happens when you're pregnant. And all of a sudden, Heather goes, oh, okay. And she came back to normal. And it was just like, all she needed was somebody to say, well, of course, of course you're, you're, you're going through all these emotions. That's, that's part of life. Oh, thank you. I'm not some crazy person. We're all crazy, right? <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was just like that over and over and over. It, Judah was born. And my friend... He, would have, he had a little kid, and he was walking, and he would just put out his finger like this, and his, his kid would grab a hold of his finger, and they'd walk across the road. And I'm like, how do you do that? Because I've got to grab Judah's arm, you know, and he's going to ready to run across into traffic, and if I don't stop, I have to just grab him. And, and, and I'm like, I don't know how to do this. I mean, I could show him how to fight with a lightsaber. That's easy. But, 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 but being a parent, that's, that's hard. And he goes, to, hey, First, you need to tell, the, tell him what you'd like him to do. Okay. 
Judy, we're going to walk across this street, and I need you to hold my hand. And then I put out my finger, and he grabs my hand. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. You know, it's like, I, it's not rocket science. It's just being a parent, and we all have to learn it. But, man, when we have a community around us to help us out, man, it sure is nice. There's times we, Heather and I were in arguments, and we had to go over to their house. And they were the referees. Oh, that's foul, Dustin. That's a little too over, you know? Let's come back into reality, you know? You know, okay, okay. And then we, we learned how to fight within our community. And then, I mean, these, these close friends, it was so, we're so thankful for them. And then um, the storm came. And uh, we had bought the house. Judah was just born. And... Um, we were working in this church, and it was the best church I thought I could ever. I mean, it's larger than I'd ever been in, and it was, we were exploding, and it was like we just moved into a, a new, into a new uh, building, and, and, and everyone was coming. It was just growing like gangbusters. And then Palm Sunday, I baptized a couple kids. I got to preach it. I preached it three services in the morning, baptized a couple kids, had a staff, my staff meeting with my, all my volunteer staff, and then another service, a youth service, and then the senior pastor called me into his office and says, hey, Dustin, um, you didn't do anything wrong. You're not a sinner or anything like that, but we just don't think you fit with our church, and so you can clean out your desk on Monday. And I was like, say that again? You know, like, yeah. you know, we just don't think you fit. You're fired. And I, we didn't know what to do. We were still fixing up the house. I was a youth pastor, so I didn't have any money. <laughs> I, I didn't know how we'd ever survive. And that was in the spring. That was Palm Sunday. And, uh, and so we decided, we, we, went, we just went home to our, we went to our small group and said, I don't know what just happened. And we started crying our eyes out. And they wrapped their arms around us. And then we decided to go and we decided to go and take take a little time to go see family because when you, when you don't have any money you don't have money for a vacation to travel to go see family out of state so we went and, and saw family went to Idaho to see Heather's family and um, we came back and we saw we realized that our house had been broken into but it was our small group who had broken into our house. And they had gone through the entire house and the trim all the way around. They installed the trim all the way around our house. And they took caulking and caulked it all the way around the house. And they had taken all of our clothes and they had done all the laundry and they folded it all and it was all clean. Our beds, our clothes, everything was clean inside of our house. We had a third of an acre and it was on a triangle so the front yard was tiny and the backyard was huge. And they had weeded the entire backyard. And we just fell down just crying. And that's the point where the, the belief about community and belonging went from our head to our feet to our heart. And I re we, re we realized these friends were no longer friends, they were family. And that's when I was like, oh, that's what you mean, God. We're called to believe, belong. And for the next m many months, and I got plenty of stories of, 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 of how God provided, but we didn't get a job until November. All the way through the winter or the summer, the Arizona summer, where our air conditioner went out. That's another story. And God provided through community, through a tribe. Proverbs 18, 24 says, there are friends who destroy each other but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. See, that's when we choose to connect. If we had never chosen to connect, we would have completely fall, fallen. I mean, it just happens. That's why. It's, it's important. It's important to connect with one another. Not only is that important, okay, here's the second practice, is we need to make space for new people to connect. We need to be making space for new people to connect. Do you remember my carabiner, right? 
So what's cool about a carabiner is there's a lot of keys there, and, and I could do this, and nothing will go out. But if I take some more keys, and I go like this, and it clicks right in, and it just clicked right in, but it's, hard, it's very easy to put keys on. It's a little bit more difficult to get keys off. Does that make sense? See, this is what we're called to be. We're called to connect people. We need to make space so people can connect with God, so he can connect with God's family. And more than anything, God wants us to reach out and welcome people, welcome new people to our community. Um, Romans 15, 7 says, so reach out and welcome one another to, for God's glory. Jesus did it, now you do it. So we are called to reach out to one another. And God wants more than anything. He says, I want my family to really just always be welcoming in. And no matter who, you know, everyone is welcome. Just come, right? Sadly. Is that how God's family always works? No. Even though God wants it to be like a carabiner, sometimes it's more like a padlock. Sometimes it's a padlock where it's just like, okay, um, no, we like it this way. We don't want to change. And when people come in, they kind of mess it all up, right? We like it this way. Um, new, when new, we like it. It's comfortable. It's stable. It's safe. Those new people that walk in the door, I don't know, that's different. They, they smell different or they look different or whatever it is. Unfortunately, sometimes God's family, the mantra is us for no more. Praise the Lord. Shut the door, right? But that's not how God calls us to do. It's not how God calls us to live because as a church, it is important for us to always be making space for new people. And just, you know, that's why we have two services. I, I remember on New Year's, New Year's Day, we had a, we had a big service because we had one service, right? And everyone's like, man, don't you love it this way? Isn't it great? And I thought, you know what? If I invited my friend, there wouldn't be a place to sit. And that's why we have two services. I know sometimes we need to think about that. We need to be, think about if you're a part of a group, if you're a part of a small group already, have you been thinking about that person who needs that small group? Sometimes small groups, you know, when they sit in a circle, you know, everyone will sit down, and then it's like, okay, well, let's, let's get another chair, and let's put it right here. And, well, who's that for? Well, that's for the person who's not here yet. I bet you there's someone in your life that needs to sit in that chair who needs what we got going on right now. We need to pray for that person. We need to be aware of that person. We need to be thinking about how can we bring someone else new in. Sometimes it's like, Ministry, if you're doing something, a, a work here at the church, or if you've got something, if God's using you, have you thought about, I mean, now I realize you do it because you love doing it. I mean, we all love doing it. I mean, I love playing guitar. And I love preaching. But is it all about me, or is it more about, we need to get more people here. More people need to be stepping up. So I need to always constantly be remembering, okay, how can I help encourage more people? And, and there's this fear of, well, you know what? If, if, you know, there's a fear of, well, if I let you in, it, it, then there won't be a place for me. But just so you know, God's kingdom doesn't work that way. There's always a need. It's never like, oh, five o'clock, we can stop being lights to the world. There's plenty of darkness in this world, isn't there? Think about it. There was a whole new people on stage today. A, a lot of new people, probably new faces. In fact, um, I don't know who's playing the Martin, but he was brand new since first service. He wasn't at first service. He was here already. And I think, praise God. And you know what's even cooler? Is there a whole bunch of people that you'd probably know that are from our church that were leading in other churches today who are leading worship? We had people from our worship band who are leading worship, worship in other places because we want to make sure there's room. And we want to make sure everyone can connect. We're all on the same team. It's not like they're playing for another team. They're playing for Jesus' team. And we want them to be a part of it. We want everyone to be, there's room. We need to make room. I'm so glad that someone allowed me room to be a part of God's team. Who do you need to make room for? Who do you need to connect with? And who do you need to make room for? 
Maybe you're here today and you just feel like, you know what, I, I, I have not felt like there's a place to belong. I hope you can find a place here. I hope you can realize that, you know what, God loves you. If you've never connected with God, I hope you realize how much he loves you, how much he wants you to be a part of things, a part of his life, a part of his family. And I grant it, us as a, as a church family, as God's family, sometimes we screw it up and we don't act like it like we should. But someday there's going to be a big house. Let me tell you about this big house. Jesus talked about it in, in John chapter 14. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. More than enough room. There's going to be rooms that, we've never, that, that no one's ever been into. And he wants to fill every single one of those rooms. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? See, God wants you to belong to his family. And here's a side note. I just think about this. It took seven days for God to create this universe that we live in. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty beautiful. It's pretty immense. But Jesus has been gone since he's ascended to heaven, say, around 2,000 years. And he's been working the whole time to prepare a place for us. How good is that going to be? Just think about that. Seven days here for our universe and 2,000 years plus for whatever's coming next. Please, he says, come. Doors open. I want you to be a part of that. God wants you to belong to his family. And when the sun is out, you need a place to celebrate. People that you belong with that celebrate because the sun is out. When it's cold, you need a place where you belong and you can find warmth. When it's dark, you need a family to belong to that will help show you the light. And when the storm comes, you need a place to belong to that you can hold on to them through the storm. It's God's hope for you. That's how we find footing, where we can stand in the midst of this treacherous world and not fall down the highway to hell. It's my prayer. Don't leave this place without connecting today. If you want to connect with small groups, once again, um, in, the, in, in the bulletin, there is this updated thing. We'd love for you to be a part of that. That's just an easy way, but if you want to connect with God today, our prayer team is going to be up here. And we'd love to pray with you. We'd love to, to welcome you into God's family. My prayer is that this place is a place where you can believe, but also belong. Next week, Barney talks about becoming and what we get to become because who we are today is not who we get to become. We get to be, there's more. God has plans. I can't wait to hear it. Would you stand with me as we close? God, you said at the very beginning of time that it was not good for us to be alone. There are so many in this world who are disconnected, who are in need of a place to belong. Please make this place and these people here places where others can belong. Please give us the courage to look across the room and connect face to face with one another instead of looking in our pocket to see what's on the screen. Thank you that you came to this world to make a way so that we can belong to your family and help us continue to make room for new family members, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name.